Don't allow the testimonies they give to deceive you. By Jesus, son of Jesus. But then we're told in verse 7, which was what the deputy of the country. Look at his position. In Chimese, the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerers, for so is his real name by interpretation. The other name, he used that for a cover. The other title, bad Jesus, he used that one just to project himself as a true prophet of God. But the real name, Elimas the sorcerer, was to them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Thank God for the Spirit of God. I said, thank God for the outpouring of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. In verse 9, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. The name by Jesus, son of Jesus, did not deceive Paul the apostle. He knew this one was a child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. Thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. He lost all his evil power. And all his program, plan, project, he wanted to kind of uh, derail the preaching of the gospel. Everything was stopped. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished by the doctrine of the Lord. Well, the false prophets who have seen their identity. They might speak great swelling words of vanity, but they will not deceive us anymore. I said they will not deceive us anymore. We know that all those words, the, you know, they may gather some words together, raise up emotions of people and the feelings of people. We know it's all deception. We're looking for the truth. And if we don't find truth there, we're not going to be cajoled. We're not going to be deceived. by all those great swelling words of vanity, Second Peter chapter 2, in 2 Peter chapter 2, we're looking at verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried about with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured, they entice, they deceive. Through the loss of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error while they promise them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. They give out a lot of promises. You'll be free. You'll have this. You'll have that. And meanwhile, they themselves are captives of the corruption they're trying to set people free from. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. They escaped before. They were saved before. They were purged before. They were living clean lives before, but now they have run into error and they again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. That will not happen to you. What are we to do? What's our responsibility? Looking at the words of Jesus Christ, what's to be our response? What's to be our decision? Romans chapter 16. In Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, 
Are there brethren here? Where are they? God bless you. I knew you raised up your hand. Brethren, brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus Christ, citizens of the kingdom of God, pilgrims on our way to glory, I'll see you there. We're on this narrow path, and this is the narrow path that leads to heaven. And when you get there, you'll see the Lord. You'll see the angels of God. You'll see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You'll want to have some time, see Moses and Elijah. You'll want to see David there. You'll want to see those worthies of old. You'll want to see me there too. I'm sure you are praying for me. You want to see me there, I'll see you there too. But you know the Lord is telling us now we're doing well. Now we're in the right path. And he's telling us we shouldn't allow anybody anywhere to make us go away from the way that leads to heaven. That's why it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, now mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrines which ye have learned, and do what? Say it aloud. I will avoid them. I will avoid the false prophets. Say that. I'll avoid the false prophets. I set my eyes on glory land. Nothing will turn me back. Let's rise up and pray. Nothing will turn you back. Want to see the Lord. Want to get to heaven. We don't want any false prophet to come and deceive us. We've come this far. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're children of God. See all the sacrifices that we have made. And see the price we have paid. See the consecration that we have made. See the work you have done. And see how far you have come. You are very near the gate of heaven. At this late hour, don't allow anybody to turn you back. Avoid them. Make up your mind. Tell the Lord, oh Lord, I will avoid them. You know the sound doctrine already? You are born again already? The Spirit of God is bearing witness in your heart. You are a child of God. A great inheritance is waiting for you in heaven. Don't allow the devil to turn you back from the way of righteousness. See all that you have endured, the persecution you have endured, the challenges you have gone through. See everything that has happened up till this hour, up till this moment. They abused you, they insulted you, they persecuted you, they denied you of your right in the family, and you kept on holding on. The grace of God supported you and sustained you. A lot of rewards are waiting for you in heaven. You don't want, uh, you know, somebody, a false prophet, a deceiver, a person who is not committed to the truth. You don't want a person like that now to turn you back. You know more than them. You have inheritance more than what they have. Jesus is your savior. The promises of God are yours. The Holy Ghost is your comforter. The provision of the Lord is yours. You even have a ministry. The Lord has given you ministry and grace. Know how important your soul is and know how the Lord has valued you so much and he has drawn you to himself. You don't want to follow a false prophet that will make you lose all the privileges you have got in Christ. Avoid them. You know the truth already. Hold on to that truth. Don't add error to it. Don't add false doctrine to it. If there's any problem, don't allow the devil to use that problem to make false prophets snatch you away from the Lord. You have had problems before and the Lord solved them. The same God of yesteryears 
who solved the problems of the past, that same God is still alive. It will solve this one too. This mountain shall become a plain before you, a child of God. Don't allow the temporary difficulty to make you open the door for false prophets. The grace of God is sufficient for you. The Lord is watching over you. He'll protect you. He'll preserve you unto his eternal kingdom. You will not lose your reward. Don't allow any false prophet to take you away from the good thing the Lord has done in you, for you, and through you. Don't allow discouragement. At the time of discouragement, our hearts are so soft that if a false prophet comes at that time, he may get us away. When we're looking for friends, for sympathizers, it's very easy for a false prophet to come and lend what they call a helping hand. But no, no. You'll rather suffer for a minute, for a moment, and wait for the right solution from the hand of the Lord. Beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly the ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm sure you are not too tired. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the enlightenment. We thank you, Lord, for the light of the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for the way, the way to life eternal, the narrow way. And we'll put our feet on the way. And we're going to follow you, we'll not look back. The grace and the strength to follow through. Give to every one of us in Jesus' name. You have raised us up as believers. Believers that are conquerors, more than conquerors. We have the victory already. And we're triumphant already. And Lord, we pray, we'll be teachers of the word ourselves. And we want to be teachers. We'll not open our ears or give any attention to the people that do not know the truth that we know. Preserve us from the false prophets. Protect us from the false prophets. Help us by your spirit to always speak loud and clear within us when a false prophet is drawing near. And we pray, Lord, the good thing you have given us will keep until the final day. All these, my brothers and sisters, with our children, with our teenagers, oh Lord, will be in heaven on the final day in Jesus' name. The good thing you have given us, no false prophet will take it away from us. And your people will be getting stronger and stronger in the knowledge of the truth in Jesus' name. Preserve us until the end. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the whole church said, Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for everything we have learned already. We pray, Lord, that all these things will be reaching on the table of every heart. And Lord, the passion, the fire, the fervency, the pursuit, you grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray that any passion we have lost, any fire we have lost, any commitment we have lost, you restore to everyone abundantly in Jesus' name. Open the pages of the scriptures to everyone, even tonight. And we pray that the grace to abide in the word, 
to live like the word teaches us and to move on in everything every action according to your word your grant to every one of us in jesus name members ministers parents children long-time believers and newcomers we pray we'll follow your word step by step day after day in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray you must give me another amen before you sit down god bless you we're coming to galatians chapter 2 and today we're looking at verses 11 12 13 and 14 galatians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 11 but when peter was come to antioch i withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed and then in verse 12 it says for before that certain came from james he did eat with the gentiles but when they were come he withdrew and separated himself fearing them which were of the circumcision then in verse 13 and the other jews dissembled likewise with him in so much that barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation now in verse 14 but when i saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel i said unto peter before them all if thou being a jew livest after the manner of the gentiles and not as do the jews why compellest thou the gentiles to live as do the jews we thank the lord for the passage of scripture we're looking at today it's one of the evidences that the bible is the word of god normally when you write the story the history of great men and you write their autobiography you do not put some of these things there that might bring them to bad light why should there be any disagreement between barnabas and paul that's written in the bible why should there be any kind of dissembling or dissimulation in the action of peter that's written in the bible how should paul confront peter because of what he has done that's written in the bible and we need to remember that whatsoever things were written at all time they were written for our learning that we through the comfort and the patience of scriptures might have hope so today we're looking at preserving the truth of the gospel at all cost preserving and there is what paul the apostle did he saw that the truth of the gospel was being turned upside down he saw that the truth of the gospel was being eroded into and he wanted and he had to defend the gospel the truth of the gospel why do we have to preserve the truth of the gospel because if the gospel is changed a mutilated gospel cannot save if the gospel is changed a modified gospel cannot save if the gospel is changed a watered down gospel cannot save that's the reason why because paul the apostle was interested in the salvation of people both jews and gentiles so he had to defend the truth of the gospel preserve the truth of the gospel so that this gospel will remain as god has given us and it remains as god has given us then people will hear the gospel the true gospel the perfect gospel 
the heavenly gospel, the saving gospel, the transforming gospel, and the gospel that changes not. And so, those who hear will be able to respond to that gospel. They will give their lives to the Lord and they will be saved as it was then. So it should be today that every one of us ministers, every one of us preachers, every one of us leaders, every one of us soul winners should preserve the truth of the gospel at all costs. Preserving the truth of the gospel at all costs. There are three things we're looking at today in the message. Number one, the danger of pillars shifting from the foundation. That's what happened to Peter. He was a pillar in the kingdom, a pillar in the church, a pillar in the New Testament. And now the pillar was shifting from the foundation and that's very dangerous and the same thing with us today any preacher well-known preacher any preacher a preacher that is known all over the world or maybe all over our nation maybe all over our state maybe in our church if it sheets from the foundation that's very dangerous because many will backslide and many will lose their faith and their hope in the Lord. The danger of pillars shifting from the foundation. Number two, the dissembly of partners shaking by fear. After Peter kind of dissembled, he left the place where he was before when those Jews came from James. Barnabas and others, they also dissembled with him. And they said, if Peter is afraid of those people coming from Jerusalem, who am I? And so we have the dissembling of partners shaken by fear. Fear of man is very, very dangerous. The fear of man will bring a snare. The fear of a man, a woman, high people, great people, forceful people, the fear of their face and the fear of their coming. What will they say? What will they do? How will they react? How will they respond? That fear, the fear of anyone in our lives will bring us near and lead us astray. And not only lead us astray, a leader's sin it's a leading sin. It will lead other people astray to you. The dissembling of partners shaking by fear. Number three, the defense by Paul. Steadfast in the faith. The defense by Paul. Paul the apostle. Thank God we have a person like Paul the apostle that when everybody was going the other direction, he could stand alone and he could stand for the truth. Thank God today you can be a man like that because if everybody fell, Paul will stand. If everybody compromised, who will be conqueror? If everybody went astray, who will stand on the truth of the word of God? It's good for you in the time of the Old Testament. There was a Daniel, a Daniel that was stand alone. And then his three companions and friends could follow him. In the time of the New Testament, we have this man, Paul the Apostle, and he could stand. And because he stood, the word is now preserved search for us. I pray the Lord will make a Paul out of you. I'll make you stand whatever is happening around you in Jesus' name. The defense by Paul steadfast in the faith. Let's come to number one. Number one, we have the danger of pillars shifting from the foundation. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the immutability of the saving pillar of truth. There's the pillar of truth. Apart from a human being, apart from a preacher, apart from an apostle, being a pillar, the pillar of truth. That's the pillar on which we build the temple of truth. And we build everything we want to build because 
the temple of truth, the truth of the gospel must stand on a pillar, the immutability of the saving pillar of truth. Number two, the instability of some pillars in the temple. The temple is the church. The temple is the whole thing that we have under the saving grace of God. And there are some of the pillars there, some of the preachers there, some of the pastors there, some of the people there that were shaking. They were unstable. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. The instability of some pillars in the temple. Number three, the importance of steadfast perseverance without timidity. The importance of holding on and standing fast and remaining solid, unshakable, steadfast perseverance without timidity. Let's look at number one is the immutability of the saving pillar of truth. We're told in First Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. First Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 15, but if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. The church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. If the church is...